Well, now we're beginning to explore bisectors of triangles. And we start off with looking at the perpendicular bisector theorem and the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. And the perpendicular bisector theorem states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So let's start by looking at what we have here in the diagram. We've got a triangle, and we're going to say that this triangle is W, X, Z. And we have a perpendicular bisector. This line M is a perpendicular bisector. We can note that it is a perpendicular bisector. One, it bisects this segment XZ. And it's perpendicular because we see the right triangle box right there. And it's at the, and because it's a bisector, then YZ and YX are congruent. And we see that with the congruent hash marks there. So let's see what we have here. If WX is 25.3, that's the length of that segment, whatever unit that may be, and YZ is 22.4, so YZ is right here, so it's 22.4, and WZ is 25.3, here's WZ here and here, find x, y. Well, back again, according to the perpendicular bisector theorem, if x, z in this case, or excuse me, if line m, and we got two points here on line m, we got w and we got y, is a perpendicular bisector of x, z, then xy is going to equal zy. And if that's the case, then xy, which we're asked to find, is going to be equal to zy or yz, as the case may be, however we label it, 22.4. All right. Perpendicular bisector. We're going to look at the same diagram uh, and gain some other information out of it. Hold on. All right, this time we got the same diagram, but we're told that if M is perpendicular, a perpendicular bisector to XZ and WZ. And again, we know it's a perpendicular bisector because we've got the right angle triangle box. It's at the midpoint of YZ. We see that XY and ZY are congruent to each other from just what is described there on the diagram. And then it goes on to say, and WZ is equal to 14.9. So this segment WZ is equal to 14.9, and we're asked to find what is WX. Now, using the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, this is what it says, is if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So saying that another way, or let's go back to just the perpendicular bisector theorem. Uh, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, so W is definitely on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant to the endpoints of that segment. Well, the endpoints of the segment that line M is bisecting is, w, is X and Z. And so that means that W, this point here, is going to be an equal distance from that endpoint and this endpoint. So if WZ is 14.9, then by the bi perpendicular bisector theorem, WX also has to equal 14.9.
Shazam. All right, we're going to look at one more portion of this illustration. All right, this time again, we're stating that if M, line M, right here, is a perpendicular bisector of XZ, and we see that it is from the markings on the diagram, the right angle uh, at the point of intersection where M, line M, intersects y, Z, XZ, which tells us it's uh, perpendicular, and then we know that it's at the midpoint of XZ because XY and ZY are congruent. We see those markings here and here. And then we go on. Okay. WX is equal to 40, 4A minus 15. So WX is 4A minus 15. And WZ is equal to a plus 12. Now again, the perpendicular bisector theorem tells us that if a point lies on the perpendicular, which W does, then it is equidistant to the endpoints of that segment. And so it's going to be an equal distance from to this endpoint X and this endpoint Z which means that WX and WZ are going to equal each other. Now we got to find, we're asked to find the value, the measurement of WX, but we're being given this in an algebraic expression for both of those line segments. But if they're equal to each other, we can set it up like this. So WX is 4A minus 15, and that's equal to WZ, which is A plus 12. And we can solve this algebraically and then we can substitute in what value we ascertain A to be back into the expression for WX, the equality of WX, and solve for that value. So let's do that. Well, let's subtract the A, let's subtract A from both sides and let's add 15 from both sides. So we're going to subtract an A, we're going to subtract an A, we're going to add 15, we're going to add 15, both sides of the equation. So 4A minus A gives us 3A, and the negative 15 and positive 15 cancel, and the A and the negative A cancel, and 12 plus 15 equals 27. Let's divide both sides by 3. And we're going to say that A is equal to 9. Now, to find WX, we're going to substitute in A, 9 for A. So WX then is going to be 4 times 9 minus 15. Well, 4 times 9 is 36 minus 15. 36 minus 15 is 21. <coughs> That's the measurement of WX. And if we want to prove that that is actually the measurement of WZ, we just go one step further. We weren't asked to do that. But let's substitute in 9 for A in what we've been given as the length of WZ. So we put 9 plus 12 and 9 plus 12 equals 21. And we see that WX is equal to 21 and WZ is equal to 21 based on the information given to us. Persevere, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little.